students welcome to epg patshala today i am speaking before you dr krishnan dure teaching in the department of ancient indian history and culture university of calcutta in this module we are concerned with an understanding of the social stratification in ancient india particularly from the hori past from say from as early as the prior pre harappan days to about 4th century ad with so vast span of time there occurred a number of changes and in the light of those changes social economic political etc etc we shall be trying to understand the concept of social stratification so this is the learning objective today this concept of stratification in early indian society here as i told you earlier just now we are concerned with an understanding of how or what actually changes social economic as the years had rolled on human beings more and more faced complexities in their social life and with their developments in economic activities political developments social developments many things with these changes they also came to came forward with complexities particularly these are noticeable in one particular uh, archaeological excavated area that is dholabira where we find a very clear cut four divisions of the people who had lived at that time so m k dhablikar noted archaeologist he has told us that this was a class structured society because there were other different categories of people who lived in those quarters so this was the perhaps the beginning of the division of human beings along their social lines of social life this might have been followed up in the later days as we come to the rigveda we find the purusha shukta him in which this is the period 1500 to 1000 bc most probably because this is also a debated date some say that the rigveda was composed during the period from 1000 to 12 1000 ad some say 1500 to 1000 ad this is debated but mostly now accepted date is 1500 bc to 500 1000 bc during this period we find a very clear cut reference to the shukta that is purusha shukta in which find we find the brahmanas came from the mouth of the primordial being the khatriyas came from the arms the vaishyas from the thighs and the shudras from the feet of the primal being the concept of social stratification that i have just now told you we have seen in the case of the dholabira artifacts this was followed up in the later days as we have just now seen in the rigvedic period now with the passage of time certain changes developed certain changes occurred what those that was political economic and social changes now it appears that there were socio economic changes in early india during the period from this second century bc to fourth century ad or c politically the period witnessed the role of a number of political powers and their political activities in different parts of early india economically the period witnessed changes or developments in trade and commerce rise of ports both on the 
वेस्ट कोस्ट एज वेल एज इस्ट कोस्ट दैट इज भरुगछ मुजिरिस गंगे कवरीपटिनम एटसेट्रा एटसेट्रा Along with this, we also find the development of artisanal activities, and socially, these changes must let their impact on human beings' daily lives. Particularly, we find them being divided according to their capacities or skills. So these were the changes. that created social divisions at the same time also gave birth to a new attitude towards life how they led their lives this was the development historically along the lines of changes that i have mentioned you just now what we find this is four borno system under went to change now just now i have told you mentioned the rigveda in which we find the mention textual reference to the division four varna division brahmans khatriyas vaishya and shudras four varna division of the society but as the society has had progressed with the changes so the end as i have told you just now the people also developed a new attitude towards life these attitudes and changes also made impact its impact on the concept of borno traditional four borno system how it developed you know besides the above four bornos we find another major thing major development this is each and every borno further witnessed changes or division within itself so brahmanas as i told you hey they were the most privileged class what we find the brahmanas had a white complexion actually socially they were treated in this way white complexion they were superior class then come the khatriyas they were red class red complexioned vaishyas yellow shudras dark as they were looked down upon in the society they placed in the last rung of the society so they were in this way treated and particularly these were according to their occupation and propensity how they developed how they developed their skills artisanal skills particularly brahmanas in this way enjoyed the most privileges or supreme position in the society and side by side we also find the development or emergence of so called mechos as i have told you now just now now four borno system underwent a change particularly this bornos as the society witnessed developments or changes no compulsion was there to remain for any borno or each borno to remain isolated so there was intermixture as the situation demanded so what we get in dharma shastras intermixture of varnas that is varna shankara emerged gradually the society witnessed the existence of multiple social groups naturally if brahmans could marry married khatriyas their offshoots their children become mixed so this is how multiple groups emerged if we keep this society with multiple communities what we get particularly stratification within the brahman borno according to their propensities occupations or other skills or other capacities what we get within each borno first of all we shall take up brahman borno what we get what is the picture that we get in the brahman borno first of all the society gradually encountered a variety of changes not only along socio economic lines but also along the attitudes of the people the matter may be understood in different respects in the case of paying fines or debt 
we find that if Brahmana was to pay it by installment, but not in the case of other Bornos. They were to pay at the same time. But this is where the element of social stratification emerges within the Brahmin Borno. What we get? But the Khotriya Vaishya and Shudra, as I told you just now, had to pay it by rendering labor. Students, you note the point. Brahmanus paid it inst by installment, whereas the other Brahmanus people, they had to pay it, they had to pay it by rendering their labor. So this was the clear element of social stratification, how they were treated and how the others were treated. In the case of the interest rate, Brahmans enjoyed lowest rate, but not in the other cases. Here also the point that we find the social stratification was maintained. Brahman was made free from paying it ferries. They were freely taken across the river, but not in the case of the other bonus. So here also we find social stratification. This is how we find another major thing, treasure, hidden treasures. If Brahman found, he took it fully, but others, if others found, what we get? They had to share it with the Brahmins. So you notice how stratification was maintained in, con in connection with other Bornos as well as in the Brahman Born also. Here also a clear social stratification. With the passage of time, attitudes changed. The point, in point of tax relief, the Brahmins, the, according to the Brihaspati and Apastamma Dharma Sutra, only the learned Brahman, Satriya Brahmanus, they were exempted. Remember one thing, not all the Brahmans, only Satriya learned Brahmanus were made free from paying interest or other things. So here we find social stratification within the Brahman Borno. Only the learned Brahmanus could enjoy freedom, but not all others. What we get next? In the Shanti Parva of the Mahabharata, we find another major source of this period. Only the pious Brahmans enjoyed exemption from tax payment. So those who were only pious, not or impious Brahmanas, they were they had to pay. But only pious Brahmanas made free. So this is how here also we find social stratification within the Brahmin Brahmanas. So Brahmanas, learned Brahmanas, pious Brahmanas, ordinary Brahmanas, these are the social stratification at this in the, at the same time within the Brahman Bornos. Three layers we find. What we get next? In the matters of judiciary, what we get? We get only learned Brahmanus could try a case, but not the others. Here also we find social stratification. In the matters of inheritance of family property, Brahmins could enjoy a share. Khotyo wife, actually the son of a Khotyo wife by Brahmin father, he took three shares, but son of a Bhushya wife to get two shares and Shudra wife only one share. Here also you notice stratification. This is how stratification was maintained socially. Thus in point of giving shares, Following the law of inheritance, stratification was made, as I told you earlier. In point of officiating at a sacrifice, we find only the learned Shatriya Brahmins could do it, not the all Brahmins. Here also we find within the Brahmano social stratification. Professional priests were not given high status in society. Those who officiated for others 
were not given social status, not that much as they required. But at the same time, according to Panini, Mahabharata, Manushanghita, we find Brahmanus to have give, taken to soldiering. So, students, as I told you earlier, that with the passage of time, society witnessed many changes. And in the light of those changes, it was not possible for whole Borno people, that is Brahmin Borno people, to live only on officiating or, or teaching, etc., etc. They had to take to other professions also. This we get reference, refer, get mentioned in the Mahabharata, Manushangita in this period that they took to soldiering and other professions also. So, this is how Brahmin Bornu witnessed social stratification. Here we get another very interesting example. In Dasha Brahmana Jataka, what we get? Brahmins who forgot, forgot their proper duties took to professions for gains and not in, not all Brahmins. Actually, there a time came when some Brahmanus ran after gains, forgetting their bono duties and functions. So, so tight or say, so strict or hard times came for them. They had to take to other professions also. So, this is how they were stratified. Their stratification arose within the Brahman Burno. Buddhist texts also, Shuttanipath, refers to a good number of Brahmanus who pursued different professions. Here also, note, a fact is being, social fact is being noted in the text that Brahmins, Brahmin Burno, suffered from stratification. Their arrows Brahmanus with other professions, then their traditional Borno duties. Mahasutta Samojatako refers to a Brahman merchant. Even Brahmins became a merchant. Just think, Brahmins cannot take to trade traditionally. But here we get the reference to the fact that Brahmin, a Brahmin, became a merchant. And very good example, Bhasha's Charudatta, where we get Charudatta was a Brahmin by birth, but he became a very good, very big merchant, but lost everything. That's another issue, but he became a merchant, though he was a Brahmin by birth. This is how we find within the Brahmin Borno so many layers so many so stratification was maintained socially or in other words in the social space what we get next similarly in the kothyo borno also we get so many layers of social stratification traditionally kothyos in the second position of the social ladder with their borno duties and function what is that that is providing protection, carrying arms. Besides this, what we get? See this. The Khotyas were the Rajanus of the Vedic age, right? They formed the ruling group, right? Carrying, carried arms, right? But in the Orthoshastra Munishangita, Jagabalko, Khotyas occupations included Vedic study also. There were Khotyo teachers, remember. Khotyo's traditional duty was to provide protection and carry arms, ruling. But here we get the references to their becoming teachers concerning with Vedic study. And what we get, the most appropriate functions of the Khotyo's were providing protection to the people and carrying arms that I have told you. But besides this, we, had, we have references to other Khotyas who took to 
other duties. So here also we find the element of social stratification among the in within the Khotriya Bondo. Okay, Khotriyas were preferred to administration, right? Note it. Khotriyas were asked to provide protection. Here we find them being employed in the matters of administration. Administration of military affairs. Executive power lay with the Khotriyas. According to the Kashika commentary, that is a text on Panini, we find that within the Khotriya Bornus, some Khotriyas had political power and so-called Rajanus and some Khotriyas were ordinary ones. Here also social stratification. In the Monashongida, we find the Khotriyas had cattle wealth, big farms. Remember, their Borno duties were to provide protection and carrying arms. Here we find them being provided with wealth. They became wealthy with big farms. So here we find an element of social stratification within the Khotriya Borno. In other words, some Khotriyas had big farms, political powers. Some Khotriyas has we had wealth. So, in the Jatakas, we find them to trade. So, within the Khotriya Borno, we find some Khotriyas become traders, some Khotriyas become wealthy, some Khotriyas become big farm holders, some Khotriyas become politically powerful. This is how social stratification occurred within the Khotriya Borno. Now, we find them, as I told you earlier, becoming political thinkers also. If you go to the Kautilya's Orthoshastra, you will find almost in every case, Kautilya refers to his earlier political thinkers who were Khotriyas, Bahudantiya, Batabhadhi, Vishalaksha, they were Khotriyas. It means within the Khotriya Borno, some became, some Khotriyas became political thinkers. In, connection, in this connection, we find Munashangita referring to non Brahman teachers for whom a Brahman could alarm. That is, those teachers were not Brahmins. It means maybe they were. Khotyos, from whom Khotyo, even a Brahmin could learn. So we find that Khotyos became teachers also, political thinkers also. Now it appears from the Jatakos, what we get, the poorer Khotyos earned their livelihood by rendering manual service. So all Khotyos were not wealthy, all Khotyos were not Politically powerful, all Khotriyas were not big farm holders, there were poor Khotriyas also. This also being referred to in the Jatakas. That is, the society witnessed social stratification, clear stratification within the Khotriya Borno. But the Khotriyas initiated on the 11th day in terms of, in case of, in point of uh, initiation, that is Uponayana, initiation, Khotiyas also given on the 11th day, not at par with the Brahmins. There also we find social stratification. Thus, stratification was maintained in the case of defamation of the Brahmins, but the Khotiyas or Khotiyo was to pay 100 ponos. But in the case of the defamation of the Khotiyo by the Brahmano, was to pay only 50 ponus. Here also we find stratification between two borno, that is Khotiya borno and Brahman borno. How stratification was maintained? We get there were the all the wealthy Khotiyas, the ordinary Khotiyas that I have mentioned you. So were the layers within the Khotiya borno nets. So let us now come to the stratification within the Bosho borno. What the picture? Here also we find some Boshos become artisans, some manufacturers, 
big merchants according to as we find the case of Anath Pindiko. Here also some Vaishos became potters. They became very rich. So within the Vaishabhana also we find in this way stratification, layers of stratification. So as for example Saddalaputta under whom several weavers used to work. Saddalaputta was a very rich Vaishya under whom there were weavers. They were also Vaishyas but they were not as wealthy as Saddalaputta was. So there was stratification in terms of in point of wealth. So this is how the layers of stratification within the Vaishyaparna we get. So according to G.C. Pandey and N.C. Banerjee, the society of the day witnessed the growth of towns. So why we find such and such changes within the Vaishyaparna? With the passage of time, we find the emergence of towns, commerce, rise of ports, as I told you earlier, this impacted on the Vaishyaparna. Some became wealthy by tapping these changes, some could not become so. Some lived on manufacturing or labor, put rendering their labors. So this is how with these changes we find the layers of social stratification within the Vaishyaparna. What we get next? We were supplied yearn to the Gahupati, another major social group who were very very wealthy in the society. Not all, here also stratification. These changes may show differences within the common people like peace as we find it being referred to in the Vedic text, common people. So many changes, so many groups with their artisanal or capacities or in terms of wealth. On the one hand, there was big and wealthy people and there were artisans groups in the society of the time, as I told you earlier. And according to a few Jataka evidences and in Bosch, Otindra Narayan Bosch, another noted historian, we find that a worker with his wages maintained his life from hand to mouth. That is, there were poorer Vaishyas. What we get? Now, gradually some of them took to commerce. Rich members of the Vaishyaparna, as I told you earlier, they became very much wealthy people within the Vaishyaparna. They took to trade and commerce. So they became very rich merchants. According to Dharma Sutra tradition, many members of the Vaishyaparna, the tillers of the soil, as I told you earlier, tillers of the soil. So on the one hand, we get references to wealthy Vaishya merchants. On the other hand, we get references to tillers of the soil, poorer Vaishyas. So this is the certification. Now, in other words, there were poor Vaishyas in the society, according as I told you earlier. Binoy Putaka, another Buddhist text, and the life of the poor is evil in comparison to that of the rich. So here also we find the certification according to the situation, life situation of the wealthy Vaishya as well as the poorer Vaishya. So in case with the rich members of the Vaishya Borno, we may recall some Sethi or Sreshti of the in Sanskrit. Epigraphic records from Damodapur that is in Bengal, early Bengal, to their connection with local administration. So, students, you just remember, those who became rich and influential enough, they were preferred in the administrative matters. This we being, we find reference inscription of Damodapur, in which we find they were engaged in local administration. Nagara Sheshti, Rivupalo by name. The sales from Bashar, that is not Bihar, there is Shartabaho, Kuliko, Sheshti, 
they were wealthy bushels they were very much wealthy people within the bush of Borno. and so much wealthy they were preferred in the administrative matters they were associated with the royal administration so possibly the sestis were the most influential merchant among the traders similarly we come across another term shartabaho here we also another social group shartabaho caravan leaders they became so very in so much influential they were preferred and they enjoyed the most supreme position among the merchants and their social group they were also important personalities in the local administration it may be said that these fabulously rich bushels became because of their direct connection with the king through the local administration rose in status in the society naturally those who became rich even today also you see those who are rich influential get preference naturally those not do not get preference as simple as that so this is how stratification was maintained as it is maintained still today also so what we guessed in this respect inscriptions also are there particularly uh, Buller's list of Brahmi inscriptions in which we find lots of references to poorer bushels, ordinary bushels, and wealthy merchants who donated. In other words, bushels who had the capacity to donate. So this is how, in terms of donation, we find the layers of stratification within the bushel form. We have references to small traders such as gold traders, textile traders, cotton corn dealers, etc. Here also we find in terms of particularly trade, we find layers of stratification. Not all bushels became big traders or big merchants and Anathpinik uh, or other Shatabahupa. But there were small traders also. This is how stratification was maintained. In religious life also, Bhoshos were even aware from the Brahmanus, away from the Brahmanus. That is, they were, in comparison to the Brahman Borno, they were away. They were kept away from the Brahmanus. Similarly, in the Shudra Borno also, we find stratification. Just one thing in this regard, we have to keep in mind that Bushos became traders, but the manufacturing, some Bushos took to manufacturing or other professions, but manual labor services or manufacturing, these trucks were gradually left to the Shudras, that is traditionally who were placed in the lowest rung of the society, social ladder. They, with the changes, tapping the changes, taking opportunities of the changes that I have mentioned earlier, they also tried to change their fortunes by taking to different professions and other activities, economic activities. What we get? Born as they were from the feet of the Purusha, they were asked to serve the upper born. This is traditional. But with the passage of time, what we get? They were not allowed to participate in the social life of the people. This is right. But their social position began to change with the passage of time that I, I have mentioned to you just now. Many people of the Bosho Borno, as I told you, took to trade and commerce. The task of the agrarian and not agri artisanal productions were therefore largely left behind. These, the Shudra Borno people took and what we get. Manushangita, we find the Shudras to have been mentioned together with the artisans and merchants. Mechanics, Karukaran, Shilpinosh Chaibo in the context of taxation. It means there were some Shudras who became artisans. Remember, here we 
find the layer of stratification, social stratification. Though traditionally they were placed in the lowest rung of the society. But with the passage of time, some Shudras became artisans. That is, changed their lot, changed their fortunes, changed their social position also. So they were also placed at par with others in terms of taxation. In other words, some of the Shudras might have taken to the pursuit of artisanal production. At this point, it is to be noted that inscriptional records from Ludus list draw our attention to the economic prosperity of artisans. They also donated. In other words, some Shudras acquired the capacity to donate. This I will be mentioning later. They included workers in jewelry. Just now I have told you that they became artisans also. Jewelry, leather wood, wood, gold, etc. etc. There are so many Shudra artisans, Shudra workers. Apparently, they lived on manual labor. These workers gave religious donations. In other words, they acquired the capacity to donate, as I have told you just now. This shows the fact that they were financially capable enough to make such gifts to the religious institution. In this connection, it is also to be noted that artisan, according to the list number 36, that is in Brahmi inscriptions, belonged to the King Sri Shatakorni. Remember, this is very important and very significant point that some Shudra artisan became associated with the king. So high their status became. So socially influential they became. This is how social stratification is noticeable in this case also. In the Manushangita, we find that a Brahmana sold milk. If a Brahmana sold milk, he became a Shudra. In other words, Shudra became a seller of milk. That is, Shudra took to profession of trade. So they are also, we find them being stratified along the lines of trading. Remember, they are born of position, they are born of traditional born of duties. They were asked to be at the feet of the others, three upper bornos. Here we find them being a seller. So this is the situation. This is how social stratification was continued to maintain in the society, particularly among the Shudra Borno. Economic prosperity of the Shudras might have taken them close to the upper bornos. Remember, even today also we find this, those who have wealth, influence, much more connections, they are preferred. They are chosen in comparison to the others. In the same way, in that, at that time also, some Shudras were taken to the taken close to the upper pornos in terms of their wealth capacity development etc etc according to the monushangita and jagabalka samiti another contemporary texts it if a daughter of a shudra woman by a twice born man was given in marriage to a male of a upper porno then after seven generations that family became a Brahman. Remember, originally a Shudra became a Brahman after seven generations. That means if we take 25 years for one generation, then after seven generations, the family became a Brahmin. So was the stratification. So was the change. The social status of the Shudra family became higher. According to the Jagabal Krishmiti, some Shudras could perform funeral rites. Remember, Shudras were not given that chance. But here we find them provided with this right also. Sraddha, five dead sacrifices also. Perhaps only the 
will the shudras were given such and such rights because they had the they had acquired the capacities to do these so not all the shudras here also we find the layer of stratification will the shudras ordinary shudras non will the shudras in terms of such and such rights and duties and other preferences or choices in terms of keeping servants there was a stratification among the shudras so what we get in in nutshell it appears the people have developed a tendency towards social division from the hoary past we have seen borno divided society through the ages we have also seen that the early indian society was characterized by a number of mixed castes thus we have noticed social stratification along the lines of bornos and mixed castes even within every borno we have seen stratification in terms of capacities wealth etc of the people further among the wealthy people as i have told you just now there were the layers of stratification the survival of the human society proverbially depends on upon the different types of social services rendered by the people with different capacities in fact concept of stratification is therefore implied in the social space it is only expressed in different manners thank you